you are an international medical graduate who wants to practice medicine in the United States. That's great, that's wonderful, you have made an excellent decision. Now the next step is to find out how to do that. The only way to practice medicine as a doctor in the United States, having graduated medicine from a country outside the US, is to take the USMLE STEP exams. USMLE stands for the United States Medical Licensing Examination and the tests themselves are called the STEP tests. Basically you have to climb three steps, step one, step two and step three. These are the three tests that you have to pass and score very high on. Now technically there are three exams but in reality there are more like five because step two and step three have two parts but we'll get to that in a bit. These three videos, each one dedicated on each step, will be especially useful for those of you who are just starting their USMLE journey or deciding whether to start the journey or not. Honestly, I wish there were more like these videos when I was first deciding whether to start preparing for the USMLE step exams or not because these exams tend to sound and look more difficult than they really are but trust me, with the right motivation and preparation they are very much doable. Detailed information on how exactly the United States medical educational system works you can find by watching my video dedicated on this topic because I truly believe that you must understand why they made you take this step exam as an international medical graduate who wants to practice medicine in the United States. Basically the fact is that every US medical student have to pass these tests. They have to study for them, they have to prepare and they have to score very high. And now you being as an international medical graduate, they want to make sure that your knowledge is equivalent to the medical knowledge a United States medical student receives. That's why they make you take these steps. Now uh, here let me go over the step exams quickly and what uh, they test on and when do people here in the United States take them normally and in each video uh, we'll discuss more uh, of each exam here. Alright, so the step one exam is taken normally after the first two years of medical school. Basically the first two years are basic sciences, right? So step one tests basic sciences. Step 2 has two parts, step 2 CK which is clinical knowledge which is a computerized test again and CS stands for clinical skills which is a practical test. Now these two tests uh, or these two exams because the CS is not a test, it's a practical exam are taken normally in the fourth year of medical school and the last one step 3 which also has two parts, it's a two-day exam, computerized exam, MCQs and some uh, clinical cases that you actually uh, do on the computer. They are taken normally after the first year of residency here because it's very very clinically oriented but for international medical graduate most people prefer to take this step 3 before they apply for residency because this make uh, their application more competitive and uh, keeping in mind that the competition is really really big here for the spots that they have available for residency in the United States it's a very good idea actually to try to um, prepare and pass and actually score high on the step 3 before you apply for residency. Now the trick is that um, 7 years after you take and you pass your step 1, you have 7 years basically from the date you pass step 1 to take all 3 exams or basically 5 exams, right? Uh, in reality. Because if you take step one and seven years later you fail to take all of them for example you have taken step one and step two CK and CS but you haven't taken step three all your results will be deleted from the system they will not exist and you will have to retake all of the exams again but if you take step three if you take them all uh, basically you seal your USML examination and you don't have to take any of these tests ever again. This video will be dedicated on step one entirely. All right, so as we said that step one is taken after the first two years of medical school when they teach you basic sciences, right? That's why the step one exam tests basic scientific principles. And what subjects are taught in the first two years of med school? Anatomy, microbiology, 
behavioral sciences, biochemistry, pathology, pharmacology, biostatistics and epidemiology, and physiology. So step one, logically, will test you on the basic scientific principles in all these subjects. Step one is the most important of all three USMLE steps. You must try to score as high as possible, meaning more than 240, and on first attempt. Passing score is 194. You can actually take step one six times. You are allowed six attempts. And I do know people with six attempts, who successfully matched in residency, but these cases are unique and your goal should be to pass your test with very high score and on the first attempt in order to secure a timely residency spot in your preferred specialty. You can also find more information on step 1 on the official USMLE site www.usmle.org as well as sample questions. But please, don't let them frighten you with the sample questions, especially if you don't have much experience with MCQs. Test taking strategies and MCQs, which are vital for acing this test, are very easily acquired skills. So do not let yourself get intimidated by any of the info you will find on their website. If there is a will, there is a way. And I'm sure you will find yours. So let's go over the structure of our step one exam. So the step one exam is a computerized test which is an eight hour test with a maximum of 280 multiple choice questions, MCQs. Basically you sit in front of the computer, you read the question and you have to choose the right answer from several that are already given to you. Now you have seven blocks of questions on step one. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks of questions with maximum of 40 questions per block. Now this number can vary. The questions might be 38 or 36 or 39. They don't have to be 40. That's why I said maximum 280 questions uh, can be the whole exam. And you have one hour to solve each question for each block. So basically seven blocks, for seven hours. But why is it an eight hour exam then? Well, because you need a break, right? It's very, very tiring. So you need to take break at least after um, every two blocks or after every one block. It's uh, your decision uh, at the end of the day. But your break time is uh, officially 45 minutes. But you can increase your break time by two ways. The first one is to skip the 15 minute tutorial which is in uh, at the beginning of every exam. Uh, basically if you're uh, familiar with the software of the test which you must be familiar with if you are if you have decided to, to take the test already you have to skip the tutorial easily. So this will add more 15 minutes to your break time and uh, for uh, a total of one hour of break time. Also your break time can increase if you finish your blocks earlier than one hour. Whatever time is left uh, additional from your block, for example, you finish your block uh, instead of in one hour in 15 minutes. So these 10 minutes are added to your break time. Now, the break time should be very well calculated. My personal experience for what I always uh, suggest doing is to take the first two blocks uh, back to back and then to take break after each uh, block because you don't want to rush through the questions because it gets very very tiring. Uh, you're staring at the computer, your brain is tired, you're emotionally under a lot of pressure as well. So uh, I always suggest take a break, just relax even if it's five minutes after each block so you have uh, like fresh um, powers and uh, fresh mind to sit for the next block because every question counts and every block should be you have to give it your hundred percent on each block and on each question. My last words for you guys is that without a doubt the USMLE exams are one of the most difficult exams in the world and you're gonna have to have a lot of mental, physical stamina and in-depth comprehensive medical knowledge in order to tackle them. But having said that, they're not impossible. They're very much doable with the right motivation and preparation. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of time and hard work, but it's totally worth it. Just imagine this warm feeling of satisfaction and 
being proud of yourself that you have actually tackled the most difficult exams in the world just imagine this feeling visualize it and i'm sure that each and every one of you who puts the hard work will be able to experience this in reality and remember that success comes to those who are looking for it who are working towards it who are dreaming of it who are willing to put the effort and the hard work towards it and that's why we are here for to facilitate you, to help you through this process, to guide you with, with directions or with medical knowledge, with whatever we can. And I wish you good luck for you all. I'm sure that you will all succeed in your journey. And also let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm always here to help you guys. Good luck again and see you on the next video.